Tiffany with Preem, um, writer, journalist, rapper buddy. What's going on? They don't know. They don't know we went to middle school together. They don't know. They don't. They don't. Yeah, they don't. Shout out to yeah. Cooper Middle School one time. Tell her I'm in an interview. Come on. What's up, though? Nothing much. I uh, just wanted to tap in with you, check in how everything's going. You know, it's been a crazy year that everybody's been having, but also like a a, a blessed one, you know, like a lot of good things has been happening too. I like to call it necessary. Okay. Okay. What necessary things happened this year for you? Uh, The pandemic was necessary for me because my album was quote unquote done and I had a tour routed. So I was about to drop my second sophomore album and tour the world with it. And then they shut everything down. People was already on tours, start canceling tours. And it really just like made everything a little bit more intentional. Cause to think yeah. about prior times before you could only go so many places, everywhere and more was a possibility. But to think about doing more with less or what the, you got or a smaller group of people because COVID is just more intentional. And I feel like it was more like selective, like, you know, like, who do I actually want to work with today? Who do I want to spend time with? Who do I feel like doesn't have COVID? It's necessary. Like, it weaved a lot of bullshit out the way. For sure. I feel like that's, that's going to be, honestly, the new standard. I feel like moving forward, everybody's going to be way more intentional, for sure. Mm -hmm. So um, I think my earliest memory of you, middle school, you bringing your headshot to class. Oh yeah, only nigga with a headshot. <laughs> and having people signing it. And I was like, who is this? Who is this big headed kid coming through with a headshot? Like, yo, I'm about to be a rapper. I was like, this is wild. This is crazy. It that's, was me. I know. That's dope though. I mean, to have that family support like early on, like talk to me about that. Oh my God. Okay, so I just re uh had Thanksgiving with my family and they just wanted to see me do activities outside of the city because what was going on in the city was just so negative. Even though there was positive aspects to the city, what was broadcasted about the city was so negative. It's like gang violence, drugs. So it's like they tried their hardest to get me involved in a bunch of activities outside of the city. I even went to a different school district. Like I went to Hoover. That was in Lakewood. So it was just like out the way of like rather than in the way. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the layer of like respect that I get being from Compton was amplified by me maneuvering around the city of Los Angeles and not just staying in Compton. You know what I'm saying? That makes sense. That makes sense. Cause I mean, even like, I would say around high school when you signed to Pharrell, I was like crazy. Like that news was like, what? Like buddy signed to Pharrell. And I was like in a big jerking era. And I was like, we was like, oh, buddy, about to come out with something. And I was like, what, what's happening? Like, what's going on? What was happening during that time, you know, signing with Pharrell, being so young, and in the midst of, like, the jerkin' new boys, YG era? I feel like uh, what was going on in Compton and Long Beach, Northside Long Beach, with the jerkin' scene, it just hit a ceiling, you know? It was so regional for that space. And when I was signed to Pharrell, it opened my eyes and the veil to everything else that's going on around the world. Cause he's an international artist to begin with. And he's like working with a bunch of different artists that just are not from Compton, not from Long Beach. So to know like peers you go to school with or people you don't go to school with in the same city and what's going on there. Like people who grew up and went to school in Compton, Long Beach, Lakewood, they kind of just stay there. You don't see them in Hollywood too often unless they go going to pull up on a specific person to do specific thing. It's not like, oh yeah, let's go to Hollywood. Let's go to Malibu. Fuck it. We about to go to a whole nother state. Like they just kind of stay there. So I feel like I was one of the last artists to really go through artist development, you know, cause with social media and just like instant gratification that's going on today, it's so many like overnight successes but like, we was really just like, you know, I was learning how to make songs, you know, finding my own sound, working with a bunch of different producers. Well, I was initially working with Just Pharrell, but he was working with so many other artists. I had to like diversify my production because it's only one dude. Yeah. 
For sure. And then even kind of just moving from that, you worked with hella West Coast artists like really early. I don't think people know you have a song with Kendrick. Like, I went to go see the um, views on the Kendrick song on YouTube and I was like, it's mad low. And like, I don't even think people even know that that song exists. Like, what's the yeah. story behind that? Well, I was working on that song with Pharrell and then the whole TDE kind of walked in. They pulled up on Pharrell. It was like Kendrick, Schoolboy, Absol, you know, Day Free, everyone. So like, I just met them there and I was so oblivious to like the trajectory of Top Dog Entertainment because it was so close to home. Like, you know what I mean? I feel like if you're looking at a painting real close, you only go see so much of it. I have to like back up to see what's going on in the whole city rather than just what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. And it was so together but separate, but that's what made it like high vibrational because um, Compton itself is just like liquid gold. Everything that comes out of there is just like does good. It's like people support pe other people from the city. Like nobody is like bashing anybody else that comes from Compton if you're from Compton. But at the same time, the way that record was released was kind of janky, you know? I was sitting on so much, so much music when I was working with Pharrell, but it wasn't no ever avenue of it coming out. You know, there was, I didn't see it. Like, it didn't seem like any of that music coming out. Yeah. And I was going through a bunch of different managers. So like, I was like, firing a lot of people, hiring a lot of other people, not trusting nobody for real. So like at the time when I released the song with Kendrick, it was just like not that much of a rollout. We didn't have no visuals. It was just like, we put the song out. It went over a lot of people's heads. It didn't get that traction that songs be getting now when you just tweet something. But I feel like had it been like money behind it and an actual plan of attack, it would have been like further along. Yeah, definitely. I mean, then to release Shine. I mean, Shine was like, this song that everybody was like, oh, buddy, who, who's buddy? Let me, let me, let me tap into this artist. Like, he's dope. He has this, you know, West Coast flow, but it's still uniquely you. And then, like, kind of just talk to me about finding that sound to actually go ahead and produce, like, okay, I'm going to produce Shine, then I'm going to produce an album after that, like your debut. Uh, I was working with a bunch of producers outside of Pharrell because even though I was signed to him, it wasn't, it, I felt like, you know, it was more about Pharrell. Pharrell had to like get his own relevancy in the current events of him starting a label in order for the label that he was starting to succeed, you know? So mm -hmm. like all that old stuff he did, he was trying to do new stuff. That's when he got the hat, started working with Robert Thicke, did all the stuff with, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, what was that song he did? You know the song he did, uh, Freedom. He did yeah. Freedom, all that shit, you know? Yeah. So when I was working with other producers, I was like curating my own personal sound for me as an artist. And then I was able to um, find a better position in the industry. Like the day I got out of contract with Pharrell and I Am Mother, I signed to RCA and they gave me a budget and they helped me put out Shine in my album. So I was in a better headspace mentally, a whole different format of working and I had more control. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Harlan and Alondra is like such a special album. It has so many hits, um, and it's like, honestly, I listen to Harlan and the Laundry and, like, can think about what I was doing when I first heard it, like, and I haven't, I haven't had that album feeling in, like, a minute, you know, where it's just, like, timely, like, oh, dang, I know exactly what I was doing when I was listening to that album, um, and then even releasing that, like, the song Black, and it was so prior to big protest movement i mean we've been protesting for years like you know yeah. it's always gonna be relevant you know yeah. but it wasn't actually like tied to something you know like yeah people are making songs now because of the big you know protests and the fight for black life because of the events that happened this year but you were kind of just like yo i'm on this i'm on this like black pride um tip and it was just like so inspiring so talk to me about like creating that song Man, it was February, so it's Black History Month. Off rip, I'm just like on some black shit to begin with. I'm working on my album too. And uh, the, my process in the studio, the way I was working, I would just invite a bunch of different producers over. They would play a bunch of different beats, if not jam out and make a beat right there. And I don't really produce beats. So like, I, I would always feel left out while beat was being made or while beats was being played, like to pick a beat on the spot and then load it up and start rapping. 
it just wasn't my favorite. So like I would have like a handheld mic in the studio, give them the auxiliary and the beat would be playing. I would just freestyle as the beat would playing just to get ideas on the beat, see what my first thought is, see what the beat calls me to do. And when that beat started playing, I was just like black, 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 black. It's Black History Month. It's super uh, uh, specific, but still super vague. You know what I mean? And it's hella catchy and it's just one word. And I was like, ooh, that's the hook. I had like a reference for the verse, but before I actually wrote the verse, me and my homie Rufio, we really did our homework. We went on YouTube, watched some black documentaries, like uh, researched some black historians and try to really get some bullet points in there. So we're not just preaching, but we teach. I love that. I love that. And to even see it be played today, like still the relevancy is just like literally created like a timeless song in a moment where you're just like, yo, this for I'm just out here like February Black History Month like it's just a song that I really love so to even see it being used now like how is how is that how's that feeling? Uh, it's amazing because when uh, all that stuff with George Floyd happened and the protests happened, you could see the people in the streets playing the song and just being so proud to still be alive and black and just owning that you know and to just like have that be my contribution to the world. It just warmed my heart. But at the same time, I already had the second one in the stash. Like Black 2 wasn't activated around the protest. That song was already made too. We was already planning on doing something, some more Black shit. It just sound completely different, but we activated it around the protest just cause we wanted to catch that momentum and just boost the morale in the field. Yeah, I feel that. Um, and then you're working on second sophomore sophomore album currently. Uh -huh, yep. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, having time. I don't. Is the album done already? Or are you still working on it? I mean, it's pretty much done, but I'm still working on it. It ain't done until it come out. Yeah. I changed something the day before, you know. Yeah. So having time to kind of like sit with the music uh, during this time during COVID, you know, not touring and stuff. Do you feel like that has added pressure for you to be like, let's make it perfect? Or do you feel like it allows you to have a little bit more freedom to be like, all right, let's let's see, let's see if we can make this a little bit more versatile. I feel like coming into the industry, I never really followed the rules. You know what I mean? I kind of try to just do whatever I want it and then just make sure that I am able to do that. You know what I mean? working in the constraints of just like my abilities so to think about the time that i got to sit and make it more like for the first six months of the pandemic my album was on ice it was pretty much done but i just let it sit there i didn't even listen to it i was just experiencing the pandemic fully i went through a move so i changed locations i'm like moving all my stuff i'm settling into this new crib now and then i just recently probably like uh, two months ago, opened the album back up and started like, you know, trying to finalize it. But listening to it after not listening to it for a period of time, shit should already be out. It was ready to come out. We was about to drop it, but everybody had to sit down. So it's still good, yes. Yeah. But to think about what I'm missing versus what I, like when, when I thought it was already done, it's just certain songs that just don't really make no sense no more. They're not as timeless as the rest. Some of those are undeniable, don't touch it, don't move it, everything's good. Yeah. But the ones that just like, when I start squinting or I feel some type of way, I scratch my head, just taking it off. Yeah, you said timeless. Like, so what What does a song, what qualities makes it timeless? Uh, timeless to me is the production. You know, if you if the song starts and you like it and it feels good to you within the first eight seconds, it's timeless. You know, it's like when um, it's like when uh, beat it come on. You know, it's like do, 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 do. it's like oh yeah, we you know, yeah. if you don't know about the first eight seconds, it's not timeless. Yeah. If the hook is good and then he start rapping and you don't like it no more, it's not timeless. Yeah. But it's that shit that you don't got a question. You could just let it play all the way through. And then by the time it's over, you're running it back because it's that good. Yeah, definitely. definitely. You're, excited. you're excited to tell people that you know haven't heard it so you can see their reaction when they hear this amazing song. You know what I mean? Exactly. That type shit. Exactly, exactly. I mean, 
I feel like when it comes to really supporting the black community, like you've been on it, like prior to, not to say prior to it being cool, but prior to it being cool for real. Like you really show like the black community, black rappers, up and coming rappers that are, aren't, don't already have a stage. You put them on onto like records, things like that. Um, your city, you put on for your city, for sure. You have your family on your cover. And to see like a black family on a cover, which is dope. I mean, I know I saw the merch that just dropped too. Like you got them on your hoodies, you got them wearing your hoodies. Like that, it's amazing to see. So I want to, I want to kind of understand like, where does that come from? Where does that like black pride, black, you know, let me put on my black community. Let me show like what a, what my black family looks like. I mean, it ain't in me, it's on me. And when I think about, I mean, it ain't on me, it's in me. Yeah. It ain't on me, it's in me. So I don't got to put the hoodie on or take a picture with my family to just be a black person with a black family, you know? But to broadcast it, broadcast it to the world and let them see how real it is. Like, I'm me, this is my dad, this is my mom. We sitting right here outside of our house in Compton. The homie took a picture of it and I make these songs. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the bare minimum facts but like the power that it has is just so different because nobody's really broadcasting that everybody's broadcasting how much money they got all the places they go on the bitch with fake titties and lips that they fucking mm -hmm. and don't nobody care no more you know because people with real lives got to go home to their black family and deal with real black life situations on a day-to-day -day basis mm -hmm. and that's kind of just the message that i was trying to depict with my first album as an introduction to just like people who will actually be listening to my music rather than the company that I'm signed to and how much they trying to make off of what I release. Like, you know what I mean? Cause to think about being in the machine, they always want to return on their investment and the quicker it happens is better for them, but that don't got shit to do with me. So I make sure that, you know, I get a return on my investment in the time that I put into the music and my likeness that I am releasing to this machine that is like, you know, delegating when I can push it out. That's why I just take my time. I let it sit because when I'm ready to drop, I could do it. I press the button. I put my pedal to the metal. Yeah. I, I appreciate that so much because I feel like a lot of people, I'm going to say a lot of people. Some people like to say that um, they have no control over like, um, you know, the type of models that they have in their, um, you know, music videos and exactly what's going to be seen when they're seen and like things like that. And I'm like, you know, representation for me really matters. Like I, if as a black artist, I want to see, you know, black models. I want to see black families. I want to, I want to see us, you know, and, and all of our nuances, it doesn't even have to be no, like real, like fight the power, but just, it could be about chilling with the homies too. And I think you do that so well. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I really live this, like, you know, I'm not trying to put on a facade and make it seem like something that it not, you know, because it actually is. So I'm just like, I feel like, when I go to the studio, the best thing I can do is just put my personality on the record, you know, because that's why people fuck with me in the first place. Mm -hmm. To think about me as a person, in person, interacting, you know, that is all that really matters on a day to day basis. When you meet up with people in person, like to think about all this virtual stuff that's happening now, like you can really sense like who's real and who's just for the internet. But to, play the game, you gotta be aware of how to maneuver in the internet when you're a real life nigga, you know? Yeah, definitely. And it's a duality, cause like, everybody's job is equally as important. All the trolls make it better for me to just be a real nigga. They make it easier. Yeah. It's just fake. Yeah. I mean, and it's so, it's so gimmicky. Um, I mean, when it comes to marketing now, it's very like, let's try to get something viral. Let's try to get something that, you know, it's going to get a lot of retweets, a lot of, a lot of clicks. And, you know, how do you keep your motivation on just, you know, making good music and not so much of like, I'm trying to get my, I'm trying to become bigger. I'm trying to reach that next, you know, level. I smack my lips and I roll my eyes. Mm -hmm. I'm like, 
No. I feel that. You know? Like, I hear what you're saying, but I'm not tripping on none of that shit for real. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because they, they can't tell me what to do. They could make strong suggestions, and then I can suggest otherwise. Right. Right. So, but some people get so caught up in the label, they feel like anything that's suggested by the label has to be done because they give you money. But like, nah. Yeah. I understand Team Teamwork make the dream work. But I'm team captain. All day. Yeah. So dropping this sophomore album without giving too much away, what can we expect? Uh, it's gonna be tight. It's gonna be tight. It's gonna be musical. We got live instruments. We got uh, computer generated beats. Um, it's just the best mm -hmm. to me. Yeah. You know, it sounds like it sounds like me kicking it with the listener. You know, I feel like when people listen to my album, it's gonna feel like they're hanging out with me, even though I'm not there. I love that. I'm excited to hear it. I'm excited to hear a complete album from you. Yeah. For that. Yeah, it's gonna be tight. Right now, I'm like entering the final stages, so I'm making sure like the transitions are smooth, getting all the skits because I, don't nobody got skits no more. Just trying to make it a feeling rather than just like a playlist of songs that I've been making up until this point. Yeah. That's so important. I love skits. I've seen, I've seen a few people like tie it into their project and I love it. Like I love good storytelling. I love when I can follow tracks through. So I love that you got skits on there. I'm looking forward to it. Another thing I could tell you is, is all the songs on my album sound completely different. Okay. No, not one song sounds like another song, you know, from the production to my approach on the beat and subject matter, you know what I mean? I just really pick the best parts of my life in music. You know what I'm saying? Oh, definitely. Like I got some sing songs on there. I got some rap songs, you know? I got some introspective stuff on there. I got a song where I'm being super vulnerable. That wasn't easy. Fucking, I got a ratchet song on there. I had to get a ratchet song on there. Absolutely. It's like, the ratchet song to me, but the the ratchet like capital T. Yeah, ratchet. Okay, I'm ready. Like it reminds me of like the Blue Line Metro Rail. Okay. Yeah. That's that's ratchet. <laughs> that's real ratchet. Yeah. I'm with it. So, um, mm -hmm. how does Grammy nominated Buddy want to be remembered? Uh. How does Grammy nominated buddy want to be remembered? Yeah, you, you, just in general. How do you want to be remembered? Shit, happy. I feel like I want people to remember me as happy. Off rip. And I think that's the song I was talking about. Pharrell had dropped. Not freedom. When he did happy. He made the hat. Did he did happy? Yeah. So happy. I want that to be my legacy. Just like a good time pure enjoyment, like people already look at me as like black boy joy. Mm -hmm. So I'm running with it. Yes, talk to me about that. Like you, you are so much you, like, and I love that you've never changed. Like wherever you go, you know, you are authentically, you know, buddy and also have that inner kid. You've never gotten rid of like that inner kid. <coughs> <coughs> you know, being labeled or being kind of that poster kid for Black Boy Joy? Uh, I think it was my upbringing. You know, I had both parents in my household growing up and through all adversity, just kept it together, you know, stayed positive, you know, as negative as everything is all the time. You know what I mean? Just like tried to figure out how to make it better than dwell and how bad it is because we're not dead, you know? And I was so desensitized to death when I was younger because I had a bunch of uncles that were dying when I was like super young. So like I would go to a bunch of funerals and like I would be kind of emotionless because I wasn't aware of what was going on. I didn't have the same attachment to these humans as like 
my mom or my dad, you know, but to think about them in my life as a kid running around, not being able to recollect those memories, but for them to not be here no more, I'm just thinking about what I can do while I'm here. So I wake up and I'm just like, okay, today's another 24 hours for me to like live in my purpose. And I feel like my purpose is to just like entertain, make people feel welcome and just inspire people to just be themselves as much as I'm being myself. Because, you know, everybody different, but that's good. If everybody was the same, it would be boring. Yeah. I'm with it. Well, that wraps it up. That's it for me.